In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the quantum circuit simulator Quirk, which is kind of a drag and drop toy simulator that's very easy to use. To open Quirk, you go to a website, algacert.com slash quirk. And when you open that site, you'll end up looking at this, which is a menu where we can watch the tutorial video or look at the source code, but probably we want to edit a circuit. So we're going to click this big edit circuit button which will take us to this main screen. This part in the middle is the circuit, which looks kind of boring right now. Each of these lines is one of the qubits. You can kind of think of the qubits as starting on the left and traveling to the right, hitting any operations that we put in the way until they reach the outputs displays here, which show us the final state of the system. To add operations to the circuit, you get them from the toolboxes above and below. For example, uh, we can take this NOT gate, click and hold, and drag it into the circuit and let it go. And we see that we've toggled the top wire from off to on. And if we add another NOT gate, it'll toggle back from on to off. You can add as many operations as you want to the circuit, including operation modifiers like controls, which condition operations on other wires. If you put something in the wrong place, you can just drag it to where it should be. And if you don't want an operation anymore, you can just drag it all the way out of the circuit and that'll remove it. You can also middle click in order to remove gates, which is a lot faster. And if you want to make copies of existing gates, you can hold shift before dragging them and that will make copies instead of moving the original. Now you may have noticed that whenever I'm moving an operation around, an extra wire shows up. That's actually how you add new qubits to the circuit. You just put an operation on that wire and it'll stick around. And you can keep doing that again and again all the way up to 16 qubits, which is the limit. Another thing that you might have noticed while I was dragging operations around is that the output display is actually updated in real time. You get feedback very quickly when you're using Quirk. There's a couple different types of output displays here. Uh, there's these box ones which tell you if the wire was measured, what's the chance that it would be on or off. I, I really need to emphasize the fact that this is if the wire was measured because you can put these displays in the middle of the circuit. And putting them in the middle of the circuit doesn't cause a measurement. In real life, you would need to do a measurement to get this kind of information, but in the simulator, it can just be shown and there's no effect and there's no disturbing of the system. Uh, the next type of display over here are these circle displays, and they show the state of the qubit as a point on what's called the block sphere. And I don't really want to talk too much about the block sphere. You can look it up on Wikipedia if you want more information about it. The main thing to realize is that it shows more detail than these probability displays. Uh, for example, uh, I can prepare two states that both have a 50% chance of being on or off, but you can see on the spheres, one is pointing to the left and the other is pointing to the right. These states are just as different as on and off, which are uh, up and down respectively. The last kind of output display is the most detailed of all, and it actually breaks down the superposition into its individual amplitudes, which can matter. And the best way to show that is by setting up an entangled state like this, and then using one of these dynamic operations, which are constantly changing what they're doing by a little bit in order to create these nice animated effects. And what you can see is that the components of the superposition are changing quite a lot and quite noticeably. But if you look at the block sphere displays or the chance displays, you don't see anything happening. That's because they can't see these kinds of details when stuff is entangled. I wish I could go into detail about what these numbers mean and how to make sense of them. But if I get sidetracked into explaining quantum computation in general, this video would never end. So instead, I'm just going to leave some recommendations at the end of this video for other videos that you can watch, which do explain the details. And I'm going to keep focusing on what exactly can Quirk do. So instead of talking about amplitudes, let's talk about how do you save a circuit? Actually, it's really easy. Every time a change is made to the circuit, the address in the address bar changes to match. So if you bookmark the page 
you're actually bookmarking the current circuit, not just quirk. So just make a bookmark and you've saved the circuit. You can also use this export menu in order to get uh, a link that you can share with people or to download a copy of Quark that you can run offline that will open up to this circuit. Now it looks like there is an awful lot of content left to cover. There's a lot of gates in these toolboxes. But really, if you understand what it means to rotate a qubit around the block sphere, which I know I haven't explained, but it's something that you can find out online or by watching the videos that I recommend afterwards, you understand half of them already. These poly x, y, and z gates just rotate by 180 degrees around the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And these square roots of those gates rotate by 90 degrees. And then there's the fourth roots, and the eighth roots, and the sixteenth roots, and these continuous versions. You already understand all of them if you understand rotation around the block sphere. There's also common operations that are well known, like the quantum Fourier transform, or arithmetic. Now the arithmetic gates are split into two pieces, which is kind of interesting. It lets you move them around independently. But there's also measurement, of course, but measurement is really a boring operation. All it really does is snap states to the z-axis of the block sphere. There's post-selection operations. These are kind of interesting. What it means to post-select is you do the experiment again and again and again. And whenever you don't get the answer you want, you try again. So here I'm asserting if this wire isn't off, try again. So if I put the system into a state where the wire is 50% off, 50% on, this post selection will fail half of the time. But when it does succeed, the wire will be off. Now, and lastly, if the operation you want isn't available, then you can make it with this make gate menu. So there's three ways to make a custom operation. You can define a rotation around the block sphere, or you can directly specify the coefficients of the matrix. Uh, this entry is actually very forgiving in terms of what it accepts. It'll automatically fix the fact that the matrix isn't unitary for you. Uh, you can turn that off, although I wouldn't recommend it, because you will get a junk operation that does things that don't make any sense. And the last thing you can do is you can make an operation from the circuit itself. And this is useful when you want to avoid making the same thing again and again and again. Once you've decided what gate you want to make, you hit the appropriate create button and the gate will show up in the bottom right in the custom gate section and you can drag it onto the circuit. At this point you know all the basics of using Quirk. You know how to edit circuits, you know you can put displays in the middle in order to see what's going on, you know you save circuits by bookmarking them, and that you can make custom gates. What's left is kind of really the hard part, the basic quantum computing knowledge to understand what you're doing, and also something that you want to do in the first place, like what circuit do you want to make? I can't really help with that, but I can help with the basic quantum computing knowledge by linking to other videos. I'll try to organize these from the most approachable to the most useful. And my first recommendation is that you watch the video Quantum Computers Animated by PhD Comics. This is just a really relaxing video to watch. Uh, the next recommendation that I have is Kurskazat's video, Quantum Computers Explained, Limits of Human Technology. They managed to pack an absurd amount of information into seven minutes. After that, uh, there's The Mathematics of Quantum Computers by PBS Infinite Series. This is kind of the first video that will actually show any math at all. Next up, there's You Don't Know How Quantum Computers Work by Frame of Essence. He actually goes over a circuit task, which you can try out in Quirk. And lastly, and by far the most useful, is the video series Quantum Computing for the Determined by Michael Nielsen. This is kind of Khan Academy style videos where the guy who co-wrote the standard textbook for quantum computing explains to you how quantum computing works.